Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Justin Pate, as you mentioned, and I'm the owner of the Rap Institute, which is a streaming online platform that educates people on how to wrap self-adhesive film. Uh, I have right now over 600 videos at about 82 hours, and it's a pay for, you pay a one-shot fee and you get unlimited access to the videos. Um, I have videos on how to wrap walls, floors, windows, uh, and, but mainly most of my videos are on cars. Uh, one of the reasons I have a lot of videos on cars is they're really hard to wrap. Okay. Unlike a wall, which is flat, cars are hard. They got curves, they got recessed areas, they're really different, okay? But cars for me are also really magical. There's something about wrapping a car that I've wrapped everything, but there's when I first wrapped my first car, it was love at first sight, okay? And also for me, not only as an installer is it really satisfying to wrap a car, for me it's something about someone who gets a car wrapped. It's really magical. You drop a car off at 9 a.m. and at 5 p.m. you pick up a car, and it's totally transformed and people love cars. So there's something magical about it. So for me, you know, I've been in this industry for 20 years, but I've really focused my almost my entire career on car wraps. And that's what I want to give you a history on because for me, it's a satisfying, a very interesting business because it started off as a very, very niche market and it's become really a global industry and it's getting bigger and bigger every year. So that's what I'll begin with now. Um, so again, what I really want you to understand is that there's very two distinct categories for car wrapping, okay? There's full print, which is basically outdoor advertising, billboard, moving billboard, and then there's color change. Right? And color change is basically what's called paint replacement or paint wraps. And that's changing the color of the car with a single color film. All right? So just so you know, there's two distinct categories, but it wasn't always that case. Um, for me, uh, back in 1993-94, car wrapping began. Okay? And it actually, both car wrapping and color change started at the same time. But really, full print was the one who really dominated the market for the first 12 years, and it really was only in 2007 did color change enter the market. All right, I lived in New York City. I'm American, lived in New York City, and I got into car wrapping in 1996. So I was really at the beginning. And as you, a lot of you probably know in business and stuff like that, for a new industry, it was really rough. <laughs> I mean, it was like really just fly by the seat of your pants. But it was also really exciting. Up until this point, 93, what? Fly by the seat of your pants. Yeah, it was it was rough. I mean, it was it was interesting because up until that point, for like a company like Coca Cola, if they wanted to brand a fleet, it was cut vinyl on the side of a car. So you just cut vinyl, pretty boring, straightforward branding. Okay, but all of a sudden, ninety three, ninety four, you could do anything you wanted in a car, any type of visual, any color, anything like that. It really changed the game because if you're a company, how did you brand your company? You went yellow pages, put a banner on the side of the freeway, but it, that was it. And now all of a sudden, you had this whole new medium of cars trucks, trailers, all that kind of stuff. So for me in New York City, what I did is a lot is I did a lot of hip hop stuff. Hip hop, the music industry really got raps right out of the gate. So I mean, my street name was Pity Man. I did anyone in hip hop, tour buses, all that kind of stuff, but also radio stations. Uh, what else do I have? Uh, NASCAR. NASCAR is huge into full print raps, big time. Okay. But also fleets. And you did a lot of fleets back in the day. So for me, very interesting uh, industry, but again, for me, quickly I understood, and even though I just was 24 years old and I just picked up a squeegee and I just thought it was a giant sticker going on a car, for me, I quickly saw that there's five big engines for car wrapping, okay? The big engines are, for me, were printers, material, distribution, installers, and also the biggest thing that drives business, obviously, is customer awareness. If the customers don't know about it, they don't buy it, all right? So that was a really big thing because it was new, and people just thought it was paint on the side of the car, and how do you change that mentality, okay? So what I want to do is talk about each one of these engines and how they changed over the years because it's been a very interesting process to watch because I've definitely lived it. So for me, the biggest one is printers. Okay, The first printers for full print color wraps were actually screen printing. They actually screen printed that very long process, very slow, not very efficient. So quickly, what came on in 1995 was Scotch print, print the Scotch print printer, electrostatic. Okay, Good printer, good quality, but very, very time consuming, lots of toners, lots of supplies. So it was an expensive process that made uh, car wrapping very expensive to do. All right? Quickly what came on the scene was large format printers. Companies like Maki, Muto, Roland entered the scene and they, you were using solvent inks. Okay? So again, introduced, again, solvent inks, UV inks, uh, latex has been around for years, but just for car wrapping it was initially solvent inks. Then quickly became eco-solvent. Right? So for a long time it was solvent inks. And what was interesting about solvent is I hated solvent. Every time I walked into a sign shop, I knew it was a solvent sign shop because it was like getting hit in the face with like a full chemical wind. Every time I opened the backing paper, it was like, oh my God, solvent inks were terrible. So they worked, they got on the material, they were stable, but they weren't really fun to work with, to be honest with you. And eco solvent inks were better, easier to breathe, not so toxic, all that kind of stuff. So eco solvent inks really kind of dominated the market for years. All right? Then in 2004, they started introducing 
UV inks. Okay, why they started introducing UV inks is the problem with solvent inks is that solvent inks need time to outgas. So if you print a wrap, you have to wait 24 to 48 hours, depending on the brand, for it to properly outgas before you laminate it. So that created a bit of a bottleneck. So if a client came in on a Thursday and wanted a car wrap on Friday, it just couldn't happen. All right. So that was the standard for the industry. And the problem with UV inks, with any kind of new ink on the market, is it wasn't great for car wrapping. UV ink is really great for flat substrates, but they weren't great for conformability. But now, two, about two years ago, Mamaki and 3M started coming out with more conformable UV ink so because it cures quicker. And it's also greener, so better for the environment. All right? But it was only really in 2009 that the inks really changed in the market for printers was when Hewlett Packard came out with latex ink. All right? And this has really changed it because it's water-based. All of a sudden now the printers, because they added heat to the printer itself, the ink would dry right away and they could laminate right away. So no more bottleneck. You could literally print, laminate same day, start wrapping. Totally changed the game. But again, with every new ink, there's issues with that because of the high heat of the printer. It was causing a lot of the uh, chemicals in the material to migrate to the surface. So you're getting kind of problems with printing. But they've worked that out now. 3M and Avery Dennison, for example, have reconstituted their material to match with latex because latex is very popular because of that. So again, that's what's basically the story with printers. And every year, obviously, the printers get cheaper, faster, better quality. All right, so that's kind of the story with printers today. Now for me, it's material. And this kind of gets into the installer for me, you know, is really important. Because back in the day when you first started car wrapping in 96, 94, when I started wrapping, when the material touched the car is either game on or game over. All right. Either, you know, it was tons of bubbles, hyper aggressive. I used to have to work with two or three other installers to get the wrap on the car. It took us about eight hours to wrap a car for three people. But then for me, there's been four major changes with the material over the years. All right. The first one is actually an old technology that 3M had back in 1972 was called control tack. Okay. And what that was is a technology is called repositionable. They put little structures on the adhesive. So when you put the adhesive, the material on the surface, it doesn't stick right away. The structures keep the adhesive from touching the car. Now the first, you know, repositionable technology they had wasn't great. It's only until they came out with what's called control tack plus in 94 that the material actually had hundred percent slideability. All right. So then all the material became a little easier to put on. Then in 1999, the game really changed with what's called air egress. What they did is they put a pattern on the backing paper and then when the adhesive goes on the backing paper, it forms those channels. You're basically embossing the adhesive layer. So because of that, all of a sudden I used to get, you know, 100 air bubbles on a wrap. Now all of a sudden my air bubbles, I could press with my finger and they would spread out underneath the film. So not only did the material become easier to wrap, my quality went up. Good God. But what did that mean for me as an installer is all of a sudden I could wrap cars by myself in the same amount of time, if not less. I went from wrapping a car in 10 hours to four. I started wrapping two cars a day, three cars a day. My income went up and my installs got easier. It's pretty cool, I have to say, okay? And again, who's the big innovator in this, to be honest with you, is 3M. 3M was a massive innovator in all this. And again, 3M in, night, in 2007 really jumped in the game with what's called IJ380. And this is the first time they had an ultimate conformable film. All of a sudden I could do deep recessed areas on a sprinter, which is something I couldn't do before. Now there was a car in 2006 in America, which was really popular at HHR. Crazy bumpers, crazy door handles. I wrapped it with the current film at the time and I, I told my clients, if you ever give this car to me again, I'm going to hunt you down. Okay. The reason why is it just material wasn't made for that. But all of a sudden now with IJ3 IJ380, I could wrap those cars. So all of a sudden I said, give me those cars if you give me that material. All right. So material really became important. All of a sudden material got great. And then in 2012, again, 3M came out with the first PVC free film, all right, which was big for me because it was, more, it was a greener film to make, all right? And more and more materials are starting to be PVC free. But for me, this is the biggest one for material, is basically air egress and reposition mobility, all right? So now we get to, for me, as an installer, tools. I mean, literally, when I started in 1996, the guy who hired me to wrap handed me a squeegee, gold squeegee, and a knife from the Chinese hardware store in Chinatown, and a can of propane that I would have to ignite with my lighter. And that's how I wrapped my first 500 cars. I cringe when I think about it, but that's all you had back in the day, okay? So for me, there's been some big uh, changes in tools for today. For me, I'll talk about them as this is a standard gold squeegee from 3M, and this has been the standard squeegee for the industry for a long time. This knife is great. It's from NT Cutter, a company in Japan. And what it is is a multi-cartridge knife. So basically it holds five blades and it's plastic because when you're working on a car, if you have a metal knife, it touches the car, you scratch it. With a plastic knife and a multi-cartridge knife, you can stay on the car and it doesn't scratch, stuff like that. This is a buffer that's actually made in the Netherlands called a monkey strip. So again, you have to have a buffer on your squeegee to apply the film without scratching the face. This is a glove from Avery Dennison, but application gloves are used to apply the film into deep recessed areas, very essential. And again, for me, this has been the, one of the biggest game changers in the industry. It's called knifeless tape. So basically there's a string inside the filament 
you put that underneath the film, you apply, you apply the film on top, and then you pull the string out and it cuts the film for you, all right? So now all of a sudden, if you're wrapping like a Lamborghini, you don't have to use your knife, you have to use knifeless tape. Really cool stuff, great, great product out of Canada. This is also a tucking tool. There's soft rubber on the car. You pick the rubber up and you tuck the material behind so you don't have to worry about cutting the rubber. And again, a lot of crossover tools happening now today is IR heaters. This is a popular thing in painting to dry the paint very quickly. They're now using it for applying car wraps because it softens the films and makes it extremely malleable to put on in very difficult areas. So again, the crossover for that. And then what's really popular is aftercare products. Okay, up until three or four years ago, how you cleaned and protected a wrap was with alcohol, which dried it, or soap and water, which was very great. So now they have products dedicated to not only cleaning the wrap, but protecting it, kind of almost like a safe wax for vinyl. Because if you put standard wax on vinyl, it doesn't work that great, okay? Then it was about where you find tools, all right? For me, again, when I started off in 96, I literally had one squeegee that lasted me six years. And the reason why is it wasn't because I love that squeegee, is because I didn't know where to buy one. You can't buy car wrapping tools at the local hardware store. They just don't exist. So where did you buy them? You didn't. You didn't. I don't know where. I don't know where even where I got that gold squeegee. All right. So again, slowly more distributors started carrying more tools. And so for me, these are the two biggest distributors in the world right now. All right. Fellers is an American based company. He has over 75 locations. Uh, he started off in his garage. Now he has over 450 employees. All right. Big, big company. And his whole company is get catered solely to car wrapping. Think about that. I mean, 450 employees. 75 locations, only car wrapping, okay? And Spandex is a European-based company. They're in 10 countries, and they're, I mean, they're a massive company, and they're the largest sign supply company because they just sell a lot of different types of substrates. But again, for me, these are, now I can get tools, and internet has really actually played a big part in this. Now I just go online, choose my tools, ship to my house, great. It's really that easy. So for me, it's made it been a big game changer. And then also for installers, okay? At the end of the day, you can have the best print job, you can have the best material, but if no one knows how to put the material on the cars, what's the point, okay? And this is where really I based my whole career. I mean, I didn't know I was wrapping cars fast until I was compared to other people in the country. So then I started teaching. My wife was like, you are a good teacher, why don't you teach? You know, so when I picked up my first squeegee, not only did I fall in love, I mean, this is an industry of firsts. I mean, there's never been a car wrapping industry before. There's no template, okay? I'm creating my own template as an installer, to be honest with you. A lot of the terminology in the industry that's fairly standard today, speed wrapping, glass, triangles, all that stuff, I came up with. I also came up with the first DVD combo set. No one else had, why not me, all right? I also came up with the first system for car wrapping. Up until I came out with the system, you know, people, how people taught people car wrap was like, just do, I guess, this and maybe this and this or that might work, okay? And I was like, I'm gonna come up with a system. And so what I did is I analyzed 3,000 cars that I wrapped. I figured out I did all the same components on each one. I created a system out of that. So in my workshops, I teach people, I say, you learn this system, you plug it into the material and you adapt it on the car and you can wrap that car. Every car becomes the same, flat. Okay, and that's one of the big successes of my workshop is I teach people not only to wrap better, but faster, okay? Systemology, but again, the biggest drivers for me are also workshops, uh, sign shows, uh, FESPA is going on tomorrow. There's a wrap contest at FESPA, and if any of you go to FESPA, come check out the wrap contest. That's where actually a lot of guys learn new tips and tricks as they watch other people do things, okay? And also for me, you know, it's one of those things where I think certification programs have helped a lot because it's all loosey-goosey for a long time. The biggest thing for me is customer awareness, and all of you have probably seen this picture, but I think for me, Again, when I first met my wife in 2002, you know, I said I'm a rapper. She literally thought I was like, you know, I got on a mic and I did my thing. <laughs> you know, she didn't understand, you know, but now she does. And now people might understand, you know, if you say you're a rapper, you're a car rapper, okay? But these are two, for me, are kind of one of the big pivotal points in the industry, okay? Uh, starting in the 70s, BMW had a program where they would talk to artists, you know, uh, and the artists would paint the cars, all right? And the first time in 2007, Jeff Koons, one of my favorite artists, wrapped his car. Avery Dennison film, okay? And as soon as Jeff Koons wrapped his car, I said, the industry's here. That's what I knew, okay? Because instead of painting his car, he wrapped it. Brilliant, okay? And then this, for me, was a pivotal one. And again, the internet, for me, is a big one, all right? Because for me, this, if this car, this bus was done in 2002, no one would have seen it, okay? This is a combination with internet. This went viral, all right? Why? It's because it's a really cool design. I mean, it's just flat. It's just a wrap, standard wrap, but it's a good designer. Thank God we have good designers, okay? But it's, you know, Copenhagen Zoo. I mean, this one, people, everyone knows this bus, okay? But everyone knows the car wrap too. And this is one of the things where that really fueled the industry for me, okay? Then, you know, you have to understand at this point, you know, and to that, you know, I kind of skipped that on the slide, I apologize. But in 96, when I started wrapping a car, buses chart, you know, you charge $25,000 to wrap a bus, $6,000 to wrap a car, okay? When I left New York City in, 2000, in 2007, that price for the bus had come down in half. Now it was 12,500 and a car was 3,000, 
for everything. All right. So in, in roughly, I would say 11 years, that price dropped in half, mainly because of all these advances in material technology print. All right. And at that point I had wrapped 2000 cars. And I want you to really understand that at that point I wrapped every one of those cars was full print. Every single one of those was either Avery Denison 1005 or 3 MIJ 180. Every single one of them. Okay. Then I move across and jump, you know, my wife is Dutch. So I moved here. She wanted to be home with the birth of, the birth of our daughter. When your wife is pregnant, you do exactly what she says. Okay. So I moved here and interestingly enough, the first car that I wrapped, okay, I got a box of material. I was told to wrap this van right here. Okay. And I called the company. I said, I think you made a mistake. They said, why? And I said, well, there's no graphics on here. And they said, no, no, no. You're just changing that gray van into a yellow van and you're going to put some cut vinyl on top. I said, okay. I said, what's this? And they said, it's, I don't know. It's like, it's a color change or something. They didn't know. Okay. But for me, I thought, wow, amazing. Okay. I said, is it laminated? Yeah. I said, it used to be cut vinyl, but now the companies fused the lamination onto the layer. That was the first time. This is color change film. Okay. For me, it was an eye opener. Okay. But what's interesting is this actually started, this concept started in 1993 with KPMF. It's an English company. And all the taxi cabs that you see in Berlin or Germany and stuff like that, those are wrapped. That's not paint. All right. But for me, this didn't take off and I still don't know why. Full print was just, that's what took off. Color change just percolated. Main manufacturers just didn't think about it. Didn't make that film. Okay. Only in 2007 did it begin in the Netherlands. Okay. Now for me, this is a good example, you know, right here, the limited range of colors, but this is, uh, the provinces in the Netherlands, you know, they had around a, probably, I think 220 cars they wrapped. These are black or silver or gray cars. I mean, uh, white cars. This is a big internet company down South in the Netherlands. And this was the first big project for color change in the Netherlands. Big. All right. So all these cars were either silver, gray, uh, silver, black, or white. Cause up until that point, these companies, if they got a fleet of graphics or a fleet of cars, they would either paint those and then put graphics on. And then three years, what are you supposed to do with an orange car? Who wants an orange car? Unless you're not in the Netherlands, maybe you want that car. Okay. <laughs> but my point is, I mean, who, how do you resell those cars? All right. So now with color change, you could buy a sellable car, wrap it. And then in three years, take that wrap off and it doesn't have any scratches and the OEM is in perfect condition. Oh my God. But how do you prove that? You know what I'm saying? The value of protecting the OEM in 2007 wasn't qual qualified, but now it is, right? So, it was, you know, people were taking risks. Was it worth it, all right? But what's different than full print is in 2007, they had the benefit of good material with air egress and repositionable. They had a lot of the benefits of what full print had worked through all the problems. Make sense? Okay. So now we have something that's massive because it's a business in a box. I don't need a printer or a laminate anymore. I literally take a swatch book, show the client, they like the color, I go to my house and I wrap the car or I wrap it at their house. Awesome. All right. This opened the market to everyone, much wider market than full print. Someone might not want a flower in the car, but they want the car blue. A lot of people. Okay. But you have to understand, look at the difference in material right now. 3M started off with literally four color change colors and now they have 83. Avery started off with 37. Now they have 98. Orful 80, 107. Every year the companies start making more material. And we're talking gloss, matte, gloss metallic, matte metallic, brushed, carbon. All right. There's tons of material for everything really exciting time. I can totally transform the color. I can do two-tone. I can make the color customer and you can also get color change fill. I mean, uh, custom colors from the company, really cool stuff. So for me, it's really exciting. I think the biggest one for me is a big game changer in 2012. Avery Dennison came out with conform Chrome. All right. This was one of those wow films. I mean, a blue car is cool, but a Chrome car is just super cool. It's sci-fi, you know, Chrome accents were always cool on door handles or molding, but now you could have a whole car Chrome. You could have planes chrome. You could do all sorts of stuff. I mean, really, really amazing transformative stuff. I wrapped this car in 2000 when it first came out. And actually, I helped Avery develop this film. I mean, there's a guy in America who did this on his downtime. Kind of played with some chrome films, sent me three samples. I said, sample B is cool. They went to production with it. Crazy. And they've made, this is hugely successful film. This is actually for the Sultan's, the Prince of Brunei. Wrapped his car. They flew me out there. I didn't even know this was done. I wrapped his car. I said, who's it for? He's like, my son. I said, how old is your son? He's like 12, you know, crazy, but it's interesting, you know, and for the, for me, the biggest barometer of color change, okay, that you guys can start to appreciate is SEMA, the car show at SEMA. Okay. This is the largest car show in the world. It happens every November in Las Vegas. And for me, I've been going there since 2007. No cars are wrapped. Then in 2010, I started to see a couple cars wrapped, some color change, some full print, maybe 0.5% of the cars outside the show. Okay. Last year is around 40% and I'm thinking next year is going to be at least 45%. And these guys, these are people who like wipe their cars down with diapers. I mean, they're super anal. 
super obsessive compulsive and they're comfortable about wrapping their cars now instead of using paint they're using color change film that shows you where it's come they trust the quality they trust they understand the benefits which is for me it's very exciting so again for me the current state of the car wrap market right the printers are affordable I mean, those printers, when in 1996, those printers were like $250,000. Now they're $16,000. Very affordable, okay? They're also high quality. You can get a lots, lots of different inks. Now you can put almost any ink on a car and it, and it works, okay? For distributors, I can get any tool. For the material, it's very good. For me, installers, I mean, you have to understand that when I worked in New York City, literally four to five times a month, I would fly to Chicago or Atlanta or Charlotte. I'd fly in the morning, wrap two cars, fly home that night. The only reason why is because there wasn't an installer in Chicago who could do the car, okay? But now I just make a phone call and I can hire a certified installer, no problem. So there's more installers out there for sure. And the biggest thing is customer awareness. The industry now is around valued around globally around $1.6 billion. So it's, it's big. I mean, it's not massive, but it's big. It's definitely something. And for me, the biggest uh, uh, generator is the internet, for sure, okay? So what I want to talk to you about now is the, what I think the future of car happiness, is, okay? So for me, the future of car wrapping, the first and foremost is PVC free films. I think that's the biggest thing. You know, it's better for the environment. I think it's safer for everyone involved in the process. So again, a lot of companies are gearing to that. I know Oracle just came out with a PVC free film and a lot of companies are focusing on that. I think it's the right thing to do for sure. And the biggest thing for me is greater conformability. I mean, you could have the cheapest car out there and it could have the hardest bumper, way harder than a Ferrari. So again, don't ever judge a car by its price point. Cars are hard to wrap. You've got these crazy curves, you crazy recessed areas. You want the material to look as much like paint as possible. It's got to be conformable. Okay, so a lot of those companies like uh, 3M's IJ480 or Avery's 1005 with 1460, very conformable. But again, very few films that are that hyper conformable. Not very many options. Okay, for me, it was very interesting right now is a lot of paint protection films. Okay, uh, PPF films are crossing over to color change. All right. Generally, I mean, PPF film is urethane film. It's around eight millimeters thick, all right? Not very easy to put on a car, but very stable and, and you know, self heals, really cool stuff. So they're adding color to it. Because again, for me, why I don't PPF is this boring as hell, all right? You're taking a gray car and you're putting something clear on top and at the end, you've got a gray car. I mean, there's no chance, it's not exciting, all right? But it's cool and very profitable. So what the color they're doing now is just adding color to it. I mean, right, uh, XL, which is the largest PPF company in the world, this year is coming out with Chrome. I mean, that's a big thing, I think. Um, calendar film. I mean, calendar film, for the most part, like even like polymer California, even though it's good, isn't necessarily great for cars. MacTech is excellent for cars and it's calendar film, okay? But for me, it's not super conformable. But calendar film has gotten a lot better over the years, okay? And it's cheap. That's the biggest thing. If you can make the film cheaper, it obviously reaches a wider audience. So a lot of companies are gearing toward more calendar film. And for me, this is just a, something I proposed years ago when I was hired by a company to consult with them. Self-cutting film. I mean, it's just a pie in the sky, but it's like with nanotechnology, I think you can load it with stuff, put a current in the film, and whatever is not touching the solid drops off, and you got a car up. Something to think about, okay? So again, that's for material. For me, printers, again, I think they're just getting faster and better. I mean, I was just told a story where there's a company that has like a print head. This is wide as the material. That literally, the material goes through the print head, and it goes so fast, they can't load the material fast enough. <laughs> that's a luxury, you know what I'm saying? So printers are getting that smart technology, they're getting greener. But for me, the biggest thing is, which is really interesting, at SEMA this year, I was in the Muto Fellers booth doing demonstrations, and this car right here is a full print. It's a Tiffany Blue. And everyone up was like, which is that Oracle, or is that 3M, is that Avery? And I don't know, it's a full print. No way. Yeah. So the quality of the printers has gotten enough that you can print your own color. And then now companies are coming out with brushed lamination sparkly lamination, anything. So instead of just giving 93 colors to give someone, I can give someone a million. It's crazy. And that's, for me, I thought printers were going to go by the wayside, to be honest with you. As soon as color change, I said printers are going to go bye-bye. Now printers are making a comeback and they're going to make color change film. Really interesting, I think. And now for me, you know, for installation, what has changed? Okay. For me, you know, I'm, I've been lucky enough the last three years, I travel the world all the time teaching workshops. And what I'm doing though, is I'm picking up tips and tricks. And I'm also putting them on the Rap Institute, all right? But the one thing I've, I've seen recently was a vacuum Theraform machine, okay? Used in the industry for a long time, but now they're applying it to car wraps. And it's not, it's started about a year ago in Europe, okay? And basically it's a box, you put like a mirror in it, you put some cut vinyl, you know, you put you know, the film on top, it heats it up in 10 seconds, it sucks it on the mirror and you're done. Otherwise you're wrapping that by hand and it takes 20 minutes, right? Totally different ball game. And if, 
I mean, I'm shocked at some point that the car manufacturer just hasn't made a bigger one that you can wrap a fender. You can wrap a car in two minutes if you get your head right. Okay, that puts me out of a job, but whatever. You know what I'm saying? I think it's there. The technology is there to wrap a car in two minutes. And if you apply that with self-cutting film, well, yes, crazy idea. Social media is also pushing it. You know, Instagram, guys are seeing techniques and people are doing stuff with material that I didn't think was possible two years ago, for sure. You know, for me, there's better tools, but also, you know, there's a technique that started in Germany about six years ago, seven years ago, called pre-stretch, where you stretch the film a lot, and then where you, when you put it on the object, you heat it again and it shrinks to the object. Great, great technology, but it only worked with like one type of film. Then I was in Japan this year in May, and I saw a Japanese uh, installer, Koji, who took my triangle technique of a way to kind of reduce tension on corners and use it with a pre-stretch, but instead of heating the film, he does it cold. And then right when he gets to the edge, he heats it because by stretching it cold, you don't overstretch it, you stretch it like 3%. So now you're getting perfect door handles, perfect mirrors in half the time. Okay, so again, lots of little tips and tricks that are changing it. But for me, it was really interesting is the Rap Institute. Again, I have 3,000 members in 60 countries right now. I mean, people watch these videos every day. People are hungry and they're pushing the boundaries for installation. And I think the new markets for me are twofold, all right? Customization. I mean, if you look at the pictures on the right here, okay, this is a company in Eindhoven, about an hour south of here. It's a company called ProRaps. It's Joffrey Von Diak, Von Diak and his wife, uh, Mariah. Okay, and what they do is literally a car guy with a rich, you know, rich guy drops his Mercedes off or Porsche off on Monday and says, Joffrey, pick it up on Friday. Joffrey's like, cool, see you. That's it. No conversation like, what color do you want? What do you think? Joffrey just makes something cool. The guy picks it up, done. I mean, what kind of business model is that? I mean, that's something that did not exist two years ago. Okay, and that's what the industry is expanding, these weird niche markets. This is uh, Kevin Kemp, he's in uh, P uh, Louisiana, and he, he won the Avery Dennison Rap Like a King contest last year with his Hurricane. And this is probably eight different types of material on that car. Stunning, okay? Does it take six days to wrap that car? Yeah. Is he gonna make massive profits with that? No, but is it cool and like a commercial for the industry? Yeah. What's the biggest thing for me is what's called Rapify. Okay, this is a company that started this year and uh, started last year in uh, America, and they went live this year. Okay, for me, this is the big this is the big enchilada. Okay, they combine the technology with like Uber. They can track the cars. They're wrapping people's private cars, but these people get you know a campaign in San Francisco. Two hundred people get their car wrapped. You know, a wrap, an ad on their car for a month or two months, and they can track the drivers where they go, calculate the miles, and again, these wraps are on for a month or two months. They want to wrap hundred thousand cars by two thousand eighteen. Brilliant company. Okay, is it color change? No, but it's moving billboards on a massive scale. Okay, and I think the industry is ready to handle it. I think there's enough installers that can put that amount of cars on right. Okay, so for me, there's lots of interesting things happening in the market. And I think, you know, to be honest with you, I think eventually the cars are going to go back to Model T Fords. Okay, why paint like six different, you know, like when you buy a BMW today, how many color options do you get? 12, maybe? Gray, kind of darker gray, lighter gray, black little dark black, blacker, boring colors, okay? Why don't they just make one color and they wrap it at the factory? It's getting to that point. They're already wrapping cars at the factory in Europe, all right? This is something that you literally choose a car and you're like, I like magenta, I want this color, I want Pantone 4605, got it, okay? Paint one color, don't even paint the colors, primer, okay? I think it's gonna go back to that, I really do. I mean, I could be wrong, okay? And for me, I think that, oh, shoot, okay? I mean, look what the, the projected in the Grandview just came out with an article uh, last month, okay, and they project, project that the car wrap industry, color change and full print by 2022, will be 1.2 billion. That's big. It's going to more than double in the next six years, all right? So if you're in car wrapping or you're in this industry, it's a very good industry to be in, okay? Very exciting for me, okay? So that's my presentation at this point. Does anyone have any questions?